Hello everybody, and welcome to Fairy Valley's D&D 5e campaign. I'm Chicken Dash, I'm the GM of the game, and I do have a bit of a disclaimer before we start. Please do not contact any of the players about anything you see on the screen, especially stuff that they're not supposed to know yet. I want the players to experience the game without any spoilers and just let them have fun. The second disclaimer is that none of us are professional voice actors or actors in general. We're just a few people trying to have fun playing some D&D and sharing that fun with you. So I do hope you enjoy watching and thank you all for tuning in. If you're interested in joining the fun, check out our Discord server and feel free to join the TTRPG section on that server. Hello everybody and welcome to the Fairy Valley TTRPG campaign. Before we get into it, let me introduce you to the world these players are in. They are currently all located in the kingdom of Ardenna. To be more clear, they are in the city of Thornwall. Thornwall is known to be a prosperous city, ruled by a council. Since a lot of nobles in the kingdom of Ardenna want to claim the city as their own, The rules are extremely strict. Even small crimes have big punishments. But not everything is bad in Thornwall. A lot of things are different. For example, no religion is forbidden, which led to the uprising a cult of Bane. But on the other hand, the cult of Bane is being blamed for a series of murders in this city. But Thornwall is even more than that. A great artist named Perrault has moved into the city and is now providing his arts and crafts to the city. Nobody has ever seen Perot. It is just rumored that he lives in Thornwall now. He creates sculptures, writes plays, paints, it's music, and nobody's ever seen him. On the other hand, Thornwall has become a very expensive place to live in. Slums crept up, a lot of social unfairness going on. Thornwall has grown and grown in the last 15 years since it was taken from the elves in a bloody war. Ardenna, a kingdom of humans, is now trying to make Thornwall as prosperous as possible. To the east of Thornwall, Lays the, lays the woods of... Once we load into the map, you can see these woods are currently right next to Thornwall and are a holy place for the elves in the east, kingdom of a liar. All of this map is not 100% accurate. There are more places for the players to explore when the eyes meet. These are just the places the players have heard about or known about in some way or another. To introduce the players, they are currently located in Thornwall itself. To be quite clear, yeah, in this little building. It's called a wonderful heaven called the Dramatic Fairy. 
in this tavern, players currently introducing themselves to each other. Sadly, there was a bit of a recording problem, but the first few minutes are missing. I hope you understand and forgive us. These problems are fixed by now, and in the upcoming sessions, no such problems will occur. Thank you for understanding, and enjoy the campaign. Um, a short, um, tabaxi, shorter than normal, in fact, with, um, black fur, um, wearing just a simple, um, robe. Yeah. And, and just a small, uh, sack on his back. Traveling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Strange looking creature. The, 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 the tabaxi? Yeah, he's a he's, he's a odd one around here. Um. Do, do you think he's 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 a part of the the, the church? Hmm. Hmm. I haven't seen one of you before. Where are you from, cat? Straight to the point, eh? I <laughs> Definitely not from here. I've been traveling on my way. Just stopping in town to sell some of the furs I've collected. Hi. Well, I'm Saren. I'm from around here. Lots of strange people come through. As you can tell, I'm not like the rest. Hmm. I tend to keep myself to myself. Hey, Saren, would you describe how you look like? I... I'm approximately six foot. I have long blonde hair. Almost white in color. My horn slicked to the back with a slight gold shimmer. I'm wearing very simple clothing. Just enough to get me by. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fridge will continue now. What sort of furs do you trade? Anything I could catch on the way. Rabbits, foxes, even some feathers from um, birds that I capture. It's better to use all of the animal than just eat the carcass and leave it all. You wouldn't uh, happen to have any of that meat left, lad, would you? Uh. It's... Well, that's why I'm staying ton uh, tonight in town. I'm all out. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, not not doing too uh too well on the gold. Uh, it's, you think you buy me a meal? The null, uh, sorry, a uh, gnome begging you for a meal right now. Uh, would that please describe himself? What to tell? Uh, he's a he's a he's a tiny little fella, um, very timid, um, a little jumpy at times. Nice, you know, dirty blonde hair. Tries to keep himself as clean as possible. Uh, very little dirt to be found on him. Um, large pointed ears and he's constantly kind of scanning the room, looking around. Not really. Doesn't seem quite trusting. He oh. likes to think he's handsome, though. Um, for the first roll of the uh, campaign, Lim, would you make a perception check, please? Oh boy, oh boy. Let's see how your luck is. Yeah. Not that great. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there's a bunch of people in the heaven. That's about it. 
some, some scary looking people. Um. So what do you say, lad? Uh, can, you, can you spare a coin? I flick to him a gold piece, a one gold coin. Oh, thank you. Uh, barkeep, uh, ma'am, sir, uh, hello? Uh, yeah, the, the sort of jumps up on some boxes. Oh and man, looks we really gotta figure barrel. out this, we really gotta figure out this table situation. I can, can't see over this thing. It's quite large. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't really see over it as well. Hey. We're normally not here, we're normally doing finances, but, well, the people that were supposed to be in shift today, they didn't show up. Oh, jeez. Uh, do you have any taller stools so we can make this easier? Sadly, no. Oh, man. Um, A small fork are not that common here. Uh, I could see that. Um, do you have any stew? Have any what? Do uh, um food like what kind of food do you have? Only we only have soup because yeah. we don't really have that much time to cook. It's just us two right now, and so many people. Oh, um, all right. Uh, how much is that? Oh, it's just uh four copper pieces for you. Oh, oh. Um. Okay. All right. Here you go. Yeah. You hand him the full gold coin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just hand him the one gold that uh, I was given by Zavis. Mm -hmm. uh, he takes it and reaches on the counter and gives you back nine silver, six copper pieces. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for your business. It'll be right with you. Uh, As so you can see him climb down the boxes, move over to the door, which is... The handle is at an awkward angle for him, that it is not made for halflings. Um, and move into a back room. Huh? <laughs> so, so you're, you're a trader? Well, it's, it's to help me get through my travels. Oh, you must travel a lot then, eh? Yeah, I've traveled quite a long time now. A few years, in fact. And, and you chose to come here with, with everything that's going on? Oh, well, I just happened to be nearby and needed to stock up on a few supplies. So I figured I'd just come in town and, you know, sell what I had. That need to be selling. Oh, understandable. And it doesn't mm. take long for the barkeep to come back, and rather than trying to reach it over the counter to you, he goes around and hands you a big wooden bowl of soup. Probably takes both my hands to hold it, huh? Pretty much. Um, so you probably have to ask to switch places with someone so you can actually put it on the counter. Uh, because uh, right where you sit, there's a barrel. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is an inconvenience. Uh, 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 we're sorry, we don't have any smaller bowls and we don't want to give you less for your money. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's quite alright. Um, last. Uh, can we can we switch switch seats, please? Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. It... Hop off my stool. Mhm. Mm Go right ahead. But he's first, of course. Oh, this is a climb. Yeah, a short folk. They make it difficult here. <laughs> they do make it difficult. Don't they know we got stubby little legs? Oh. Set my bowl down and 
kind of hold my hand over it, see if it's a little too hot still. It's not that hot. It's actually rather cold. Does it taste okay after I take a sip? <laughs> it's okay, but it's definitely not something you would pay that much money for. Uh, does the job though, right? It does the job, yes. I'm gonna start start eating at my soup and. Mm -hmm. Say the wolf. <laughs> yes. What are you doing around these parts? Well, I started on a journey. Looking for an adventure. I find myself on this bar stool. <laughs> Needing to rest my little legs. Aye, right, very short they are. Oh. Um, well, they are. Would this short dwarf please describe herself a bit? For the folk, the token for everybody. Mm -hmm. This short dwarf mm -hmm. is four foot ten. Built fairly well. Strong enough to hold an axe. Long flowing red hair. Mm. Friendly. Quite intrigued by new people. Mm. All right. Uh, feel free to continue now. All right, Tabakti, what are you drinking? I'm just drinking some wild berry mead. Favorite drink of all. Sounds interesting. Nice sweetness, a little bit of tart. Makes um, the, um, the day's um, work just melt away. Barkeep? He jumps back up, climbing the box again. You start to notice how much of an inconvenience his small size is. Yeah, uh, what, what can I do for you? What do you need? Can, can, can I have one of them uh, wild berry meads, please? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, as he climbs back down and after a short time brings up a bottle and a glass. But instead of just climbing back up, he goes back around again and hands it to you directly. Thank you very much. So, uh, may maybe one of you is looking for a job. Uh, we could use someone. Maybe, uh, and he goes over to Saren and Zavis. Maybe one of you tall folks looking for a job. Hi, what's it pay? Well, we'll pay you five gold a month and all the food and drink you need and a bed. I suppose I could help you. Sounds a bit interesting. All you have to do is serve drinks and food to the customers and be nice. I I suppose I could do that. Okay, I'll... Uh, I'm not much of a people person, per se. Actually, I barely um, even come into towns. Try to avoid much people. Um, he leans in a bit closer to you. Well, uh, with the customers we have recently, I would avoid people as well. In this business, we can't really do that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'll, but I'll have to pass. Understandable, it's not that nice of a job. At least not recently. Anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry for bothering you all. You were all having a great time and I was disturbing you with my ramblings. If you need something, feel free to ask, though. And for you, big guy, and he points at you, Saren. We'll talk after the shift, and we'll fill in your contracts and everything, okay? Aye. For now, enjoy free drink on us. Thank you, little one. Uh, uh, my name is Garland. 
Gol and Ozef. And on the other side, that's, that's my wife, Ava. Ava Ozef. Don't call us little one, please. Sorry about that. And uh, he goes back behind the counter. As, as he starts walking back, I, I want to stop him real quick. Okay. What, what, are, you, what are you talking about the, the people around here recently? Yeah. Uh, what do you want to know? Is, is there problems here? Oh, oh. Welcome to Thornwall, I guess. You, you're pretty new here. Yeah, lots of problems. Oh, um... Like? Well, the first guy says... Murderers on the loose. Oh. And they have the head church not far away from here, which means a lot of the people in that church come here. And he gives a look around the tavern. And I really don't like that too much. So, honestly, if you ask me, I could just go away from Thornwall or something. Are they, are they like, think? Is, is, is there the reason there's been murders? Well, everybody s assumes so, but, well, the guards and the government say there's no real way to pin these crimes on them. Oh. Fantastic. Um, you can see, like, the color starting to drain from his face. It's going pale as he's talking about it. You guys, you guys have rooms here, yeah? Yeah, uh, of course. And do the locks work? I assume so, yes. <laughs> uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean you assume so? Wouldn't you be... Checking that regularly with, uh, what's going on here? No, of, of course the locks work. I, I was I was just joking, maybe in bad oh. taste. Yeah, okay. Um, you seem and, pretty nervous. Uh, what's got you rolled up? Uh, well, um, some, some of my family members are, uh, um, missing. Um, oh, so you're looking for them in, in Thornwall? Yeah, uh, my father is uh, the type of person that tries to help everyone, and when, when we've seen some of the coloration change in the skies, he, he had left. Um, but it's been uh, over a month. He said a week. Mm hmm. Well,. Normally, people that try to help others in Thornwall are considered crazy, and we know our crazy people. No, I. My father I, isn't crazy. I, I I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. It's just in this city, city everybody just thinks about themselves. Um, Therefore, mm -hmm. anyone trying to help is considered crazy, even though they are clearly not. Who who should I talk to to maybe figure out where he's at? Well, you haven't been here for long. I can notice that. No, um, there there are rumors of this woman called Maria. She apparently knows the solution to the whole mysteries going on in this city. If she knows that, how, how come it hasn't been stopped? Apparently nobody wants to really listen to her. She is oh. considered crazy. Hmm. That's, that one actually sounds like a crazy one. It's a little more fitting. But if she seems to know a lot, maybe it's worth the, worth the chat? I mean, she's not that hard to find. She... Doesn't live far away from here. Where, where might that be? It gives you a big smile. Well, I mean, information isn't always for free. And Let's say a bit of a coin were to 
drop into my pocket, I could send for her. Um. Uh, all right. Um, and I just like reach over to his pocket, open it up, and like throw two of the copper pieces in there, just very uncomfortably. <laughs> um. Do you want to hide how little you throw in there, or? I think he's so perturbed by the request that he just kind of tosses in there, doesn't actually care if he sees or not. Okay. Then he'll answer. Well, that bag still feels a little light, doesn't it? Copper doesn't really weigh that much, does it? I know you've got a few silver pieces and you just throw in one or two of these and I'll send out someone. Oh, sorry, I'm not really quite sure how this works. Um, oh, it's fine. I'm happy to teach you. I just, I throw in... Uh, I guess I throw in one gold piece? Okay. <laughs> As you throw in a gold piece, he says, Okay, I'll be right on my way. I'll make sure she'll be here in a few minutes. As he smiles and walks over to the door himself and leaves. Um, was it, wasn't he working? Uh, oh, jeez. I take a swig of my drink. Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose it's down to me to serve, then. <clears throat> Seeing as you sent the only barkeep away. I didn't think he, he'd go himself. He said he was going to send someone. It was an honest mistake. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, honest mistakes can cost lives. I should know about that. Oh dear. Oh, sorry I upset you. No, it's fine. Just terrible things have happened. Yeah, I heard um some arguments on my way here. Four men were accusing these, like, priest guys of being murderers. This is probably the church people he was talking about. What sort of priest guys? Uh, I wasn't being too much paying attention. It was... I tried to keep my nose out of other people's business too much. Because... Uh, let's just say mean people don't get along much because I'm a bit cursed, I should say. Oh no. You're what cursed. do you mean cursed? Wild magic. Oh no. I'm gonna take my stool and slide it to the edge with my soup. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've heard of your people. You can't control anything around you, can you? A bit. That's actually why I'm out on this journey, is, is to learn to control it. Well, good luck with that. For now, I'll be over here. Enjoying my cold soup. It's not that cold. It's lukewarm. It's cold. <laughs> it's pretty cold, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not hot. It's not... It's a cold. <laughs> Soup. Yeah. Say, we should get you a little ones a table to sit at. Oh, I can't. These chairs are tiny. I mean, large. Sorry, I'm tiny. We can see. I can see you struggling to get up there. Wonder if these fine gentlemen in the corner will move. Um, I, I, I think those are the the church people you was talking about. When I was talking to him, he, he, he looked around and they kind of looked the uh, church going type. 
Hey, they do look like it, but they don't really scare me. Oh, well, then, then you and oh, I didn't quite catch your name, dwarf. Kathara. Kathara. Mm -hmm. Um, you're an intimidating, lass. Why don't you two uh, let's see if they'd be willing to move. Well, I'm down for it if you want to, Dwarf. I'm a bit curious about meeting this Maria myself. Maybe she knows the answer to help me control my wild magic. Maybe. We could do it a quiet place to talk to her, though. Mm. Or I'd like to know a little bit more about this church. Oh, I don't think I ever introduced myself. Name's Zavis. Hey, nice to meet you, Zavis. Um, my name is Lindy. Pleasure, guys. I'm Saren. Hey, nice to meet your, you. Your voice carries. I heard you tell uh, Zavis earlier. Ah, I see. It's a bit of a problem I have. Anyways, I'm going to go see if I can get these to move. Kathara, was it? Yes. Did you want to come? Sure, why not? Okay, and then I'm going to approach this table. Mm -hmm. Say, at, at this table, you see three young men in cult robes, as you can see, loudly talking to each other as you okay. approach them. Can we hear what they're talking about? They seem to talk mostly about normal business stuff. How their mm. daily life has been, how their families are. Say, Janice, you seem to be fine people. Might I ask where you worship? The one right next to you turns around. Oh, you're interested. Take a seat, take a seat, young friend. Also, uh, your, your dwarven friend, please take a seat. Uh, if you really want to know, we worship the god of Bane. And his teachings. Uh, what do you want to know? What are his teachings? Oh, uh, mostly he's teaching us that there's good and bad, and that there's nothing wrong in doing something bad because everything you do. Hurts someone else, also helps someone. And even if that one is just you. Ah, I see. There's a lot of rumors floating about, about this Church of Bain. Is there any truth to them? It gives her a really big sigh. It is because of the past of our church. In the past, mm. the Church of Bane took this ideal and twisted it to the extreme, saying that Bane demands slaughter and murder. And, and that's not the case now? No, no. We finally understood the true message of Bane. It's about the balance of things. Every action has a reaction. Back then, the church was misled. Of 
course, none of his true servants will hesitate to defend themselves if needed. That's just how we're taught. But not someone to attack someone who's completely innocent we would never do such a thing. Hmm. Where might this church be located? It is not really a building. It's a community. Everyone's home can be a church of Bane. You just have to accept him and his teachings. Hmm. I mean, if, if you wish to join, um, we could meet again tomorrow and I can, I can give you some sacred texts. We may consider it. We need some time to mull this over. We have a couple of other friends that may be inclined to join should you give up the table. But then I couldn't be talking to them. It's fine. We can meet tomorrow and discuss this in further detail. Okay, um... Make a persuasion check with advantage, please. I see him think for a moment and say, of, of course, um, we don't want to be rude. Um, feel free to have the table. We'll be right over there by the oven. And if you have any questions or you want to talk, just, just let us know. Thank um, you, kind gentlemen. No problem. We, we, are. we will talk to our friends and, you know, tell, tell, explain to them what you have told us. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that very much. Also, um, he points at the table at the other side of the room. Direction. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, they might be better. They are higher ranking members of the church. Okay, thank they, you for that. They'll be, answer to, they'll be able to answer in more detail than I am. And the three of them get up and move into these chairs and continue talking, but they did grab their drinks from the table. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good job. What can I say? I'm a charismatic person when I want. Say, Lim, you care to come join us? Uh. Yeah, one second. Uh, just trying to finish finish off the soup. Be right there. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of hurry up to finish eating it, and I'll, I'll make my way over there. So, what did you talk with them? Uh, you were there for a minute. <clears throat> well, it would have been rude to just ask them to move. Had to get to know them a little bit first. We found a little bit out about this church. They go to the uh, Church of Bain. That's the one that everyone thinks is linked to the murders? Aye. They uh, seem to believe that the church is behind them. But from what they were telling us, the uh, history of the church has been twisted. They no longer believe in pain and slaughter. And sacrificing. It seems they uh, now believe in balance. Kind of like a druid. At least that's what I've been told. Hmm. It's a relief at least. 
I don't think there'll be. I don't think there'll be anything like um, Meleki, the goddess I worship. Who is that? It's the goddess that um that druids tend to worship. Yeah, I I, I was planning on becoming a druid when before I got cursed with this wild magic. Actually, um, a lot of people from my clan, like my tribe, tend to be um, druids. Because we live far out in the wilderness. We have a lot of connection with the earth and the land. So, are you more like an exile then? Nah. <sighs> My mentor actually encouraged me to go on this journey to learn how to control my these this wild magic of mine. Slide my chair back a little bit at the reminder of the wild magic. <laughs> <laughs> also, say for you, it's pretty worry. obvious that he's uncomfortable. Very. Well, wild magic doesn't really do much around me unless I'm actually casting spells. <laughs> See, when I was taught this you learn magic from study and book, you're just not born with it, or however you perceive you've gotten it. Um, so I don't, I don't know much about wild magic other than you can just go boom <laughs> yeah there's there's definitely some pretty interesting effects that do happen <laughs> uh... oh boy did I just open up a bad memory uh yeah he was don't tell me you're scared of magic oh I'm not scared of magic Magic is quite easy, and I just kind of light up, uh, light up a little area with uh, president agitation. Mm -hmm. Just right in my hand, a little spark. Mm -hmm. it's just it should be controlled. Not it's not controlled. Quite dangerous. Ah, I see. And I proceed to play with the candlelight that's nearby, making it grow in brightness and then dim it and change color to blue. You're like keeping your hand over it doing this? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to well, snuff it out with Fred's digitation real quick. You're going to burn yourself, lad. What are you doing? A little bit of fun. And not all my magic is gets affected by the wild magic. I use the mage hand to lift up my pint of mead. Mm -hmm. And uh, use it and drink out my pint. Mm -hmm. See? Nothing crazy. It's just when I try to use more advanced spells, things can go wrong. Um, Cathra, uh, uh... I'm guessing you can do something fancy over here too? No, I don't know any magic. Give me a good axe and I can crack a few skulls. Magic. Magic's not my friend. Not for me. I have nothing against magic users. Okay. Cracking skulls. Wild magic. Uh, I think I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, you'll be fine. I'll protect you. You're only oh. a wee one after all. Oh, I knew I liked you. Straight to the point. I'm willing to look out for the little man. Well, well seeing as I'm the toilet one, I have to look after someone. Uh, would it be alright if I uh, room with you then? Tonight, uh, or well, assuming you're staying here. Yeah, I hadn't considered it. I may pull up a room. Oh. 
Well, if you do, let me know. Hi. So, um, is anyone else looking for the Maria lady? I'm quite interested to hear what she has to say. Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm pretty interested in hearing what she has to say as well. Hmm. She does. I thought, she, uh, I thought they were fine that, now. Yeah, it's rumored that she's, she knows the answer to everything. So, maybe she does. Maybe she doesn't. You're right, though. It has been quite a while. Hi. Yeah, that's been a while. Do you, do you think they're okay? I hope so. I mean, he is a halfling. Yeah, he can't run very far. Mm. Nor that fast. Uh, what, what is that you two are drinking? Wildberry mead. Favorite drink of all. What? Mead is in the alcohol. Yes. Do you mind if I try it? Can't win yourself. Obviously you had enough money seeing you as you gave him a gold coin. Oh, I thought it was going to be a little more expensive. Well, I guess it's a tavern. Give, here, why don't, why don't I give you this back? Uh, just kind of pass it on the table. The one gold coin. Don't need you exploding over a coin. <laughs> <laughs> you can try some of mine. There's still some left in the bottle. Oh, thank you. I take it and... I clean off where the, the mouth goes uh, around the rim and take a little sip. Mm -hmm. What's it like? It's extremely fruity and sweet, but there's some bitterness to it where you can taste the alcohol and the fermentation. There's also some sour in there. These sour berries that were used. Mostly raspberry, it you can a bit feel of a like. Kick. Yeah, it gives it a bit of a kick. It makes it more alive. I, drink. I can see that. Uh, potent stuff. It helps wash away the day away. Hmm. Alright. Uh, here's this back and just kind of guide it over to Saren to pass it over. Okay, as you pass it back. Um... Lim and who do you pass it back to, to Catherine? Uh, I pass it to Saren to pass it to her. I got a little stubby okay. arms, man. I can't reach across the table. <laughs> okay, a uh, Saren and Lim. I need both of you to make a deck save. Oh. Okay. okay. Zavis and Catherine. I need both of you to make a strength saving throw. A what saving throw? Strength. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That was a check, but it's fine. Okay. How am I doing this? I'm, Are you in the... I'm kind of not used to using the... Oh. I don't Are think it's the... connected anymore. Um, well then, if, if, uh, what's your, what's your strength modifier? Uh, it's a negative one. So I'm, I'm just gonna roll it openly for you right now, and we'll figure it out in the break. Uh, look at GM look. Okay. <laughs> um, the both of you manage to steady yourself while Lim doesn't drop the bottle, but Saren does. Whoops. Because the following thing happened. You can see 
the door to heaven. Not just being swung open, but almost being kicked out of its angles. And every single light in the tavern, including the big bonfire, snuffs out. And a big gust of wind almost knocks two of you out of your chairs and the others, well, they drop the bottle because of it. And you are being pushed into the table a bit. And that's where we'll take a short break. Okie dokie. Okay.